Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. Today I have eight more hidden gems for the PlayStation 4. Now these are relatively unknown games, but definitely worth playing. Let's take a look. We're going to start with a game that has a bit of an odd title that is Remothered Tormented Fathers. Where did you get this picture? Isn't she your daughter? Celeste, or as you called her? Jennifer? I asked you a question. The back of the picture says Jennifer. There is no Jennifer! You thought I was stupid, didn't you, Mr. Felton? You play as Rosemary, a character that looks an awful lot like Jodie Foster, don't you think? but she's investigating the disappearance of a young girl. Now that leads you to a spooky house where everything is not quite what it seems. Now I mentioned this game plays a lot like Clock Tower. If you're not familiar with that series, basically you don't have any guns or really deadly weapons to use. Instead, in this game, you just have single use items that you can use to distract your enemy. In this game, you need to be stealthy. You have to listen for clues in the environment to know when to move and when to hide. And sound really plays a big part of this game, and it's the key to surviving. This game is a little on the short side. It lasts about six to seven hours, but I feel like it doesn't really overstay its welcome, and it's part of a planned trilogy of games. And look at those graphics. This house is super creepy to explore. This is a really fun survival horror game, so definitely check it out. Reach my land for me and then a whole new world is calling us. <laughs> Speaking of games with weird titles, here is Rabby Ribby. Rabby Ribby, I hope I'm saying that right. But basically it's a 2D platforming slash Metroidvania style game. You play as Irina, a rabbit that was turned into a human girl with bunny ears. Sure, why not? And along the way, you meet a fairy who helps you as well. I mentioned this game is very Super Metroid or Castlevania-like, and that's because you'll find areas that you can't access until you upgrade your weapons or your abilities. I really like the boss battles in this because it feels unlike anything I played in a 2D platformer. It switches almost to like a bullet hell shooter and that they have patterns that will fill the screen that you need to dodge. But really this game is all about fun and it has just enough challenge to keep you going. Don't get me wrong, this is a surprisingly deep and fun 2D platforming game despite its silly premise. Next up is Ziggurat. This is a first person dungeon crawling game although it's considered to be inspired by two classic first-person shooters like Heretic and Hexen. Back in the 90s, those two games really stood apart from the rest of the first-person shooters released because instead of primarily using guns, you use magic to destroy your foes. In Ziggurat, the levels are procedurally generated, meaning no two playthroughs are the same. And the game is somewhat roguelike in that you are meant to die. A lot. But even in death, you make progress upgrading your characters, unlocking new abilities, and growing stronger with each playthrough. This reminds me of another game I reviewed recently called Immortal Redneck, but honestly, I like this one a bit more because of the focus on magic. Now, I want to mention that this trend towards randomly generated levels is fine, but wouldn't it be great to get a proper single-player campaign with designed levels? I kind of miss that but this is a game that you can basically play forever. Next up is Shu. This is a 2D platformer in a gorgeous 3D world. So I guess that technically is a 2.5D platformer, sure. And like in so many other platforming games, you run and jump across the landscape. But in this game, you start off with the glide ability. For instance, in the beginning, you can glide across large gaps or you can even ride the wind. And then very quickly, you're able to use special abilities gained by saving villagers who follow you. An example early on is that you get a brute who can help you smash through things. 
Then you'll meet a villager who can get flowers to open and close their petals, providing pads for you to land on and continue your journey. Later on, you'll get an animal to ride, as well as villagers that allow you to walk on water and much more. There are a bunch of villagers to unlock and they all help you with ever-changing levels and challenges. To me, this game feels like a mix of the Rayman games as well as Owlboy. It has a great art style and fantastic gameplay. It should not be missed. Oh boy, here we go. So this game is called Everything. Yeah. Everything and I got to be honest with you. This is a really weird game But stick with me here because it turns out that everything is something very special All right, so what exactly is this thing? You're probably looking at this going. What the heck is this? Well, that's because this game is not really a game It's more of a simulation that attempts to do something that very few games do and that is explore everything in the universe and understand how all the pieces relate within it. And I'll be honest with you, in the beginning, when you first fire this up, it kind of feels like a tech demo and kind of looks like it. But slowly, the game reveals its purpose. See, you shift perspective from a very small animal, like in this instance here, a pig, down to a single blade of grass, or maybe you'll shift that perspective up to a frog or even a rock, or you can even go subatomic, but that's not it. You can even shift your perspective to a tree, even a landmass, a planet, or a whole star system. But why would you do this? Well, the goal of the game is to unlock and document all the things within the galactic encyclopedia, and then have conversations with them and understand their relationship between each other. As if that wasn't enough, then while you're playing, the game also plays audio quotes from a philosopher named Alan Watts. He wrote some of the most respected books on Buddhism and the Zen lifestyle. If you think that you are only inside your skin, you define yourself as one very complicated little curly cue, way out on the edge of that explosion, way out in space and way out in time. And when then we cut ourselves off, and don't feel that we're still the Big Bang. Listen, this is all very heady stuff and certainly unlike anything I've ever played before. You know, at first this seems kind of dumb. I mean, it really does. You're just kind of like, what the heck is this game? But after a couple minutes, you get into discovering all that you can find, both big and small, throughout the universe. There's nothing quite like this game. So if you're looking for something a little unique, definitely check it out. Next up is Red Out. Some of you might have seen this on store shelves, but I get the feeling it hasn't sold very well. Red Out is a futuristic arcade racing game that is similar to classics like F-Zero or perhaps Wipeout. Basically, you are a pilot in the far future taking control of an anti-gravity ship that hauls some serious butt. And yes, this game is all about speed. It's important to know that the console version is called the Lightspeed Edition. That's because it includes all three DLC packs from the PC release, bringing the total number of tracks to 35, plus you get 25 ships. The game also supports six players online and split-screen multiplayer. And like I mentioned, there is a great sense of speed here, and the frame rate never really slowed down on my PlayStation 4 Pro. I mean, the graphics look pretty great. And like so many of these games, you level up your pilot as you race, unlocking new weapons and enhancements to your ship. There is a lot of content here for arcade racing fans like me, so definitely check out Red Out. I think I'm gonna make it. Moving on, we're gonna take a look at The Long Dark. This is a first person survival game that chooses to focus on realism as opposed to just horror. You play as a pilot who crash lands in the frozen Canadian forest with your ex-wife after a somewhat mysterious global disaster. Now, the developer actually advertises this game as the most realistic survival game ever made. And the way they do that is by having the player focus on things like body temperature, how many calories you burn while doing a particular task, your hunger, your thirst, your energy level, the outside temperature, the clothing you wear, all of that. 
Now, I'll be honest with you, it's this attention to detail that makes every single decision you make that much more impactful to make sure that your character just lives one more day. But how is the game? Well, you learn to gather supplies, heal wounds, make fires, sterilize water to make it drinkable, cook food, and much more. And other games have done that before, but not to this level of detail. This really is unlike any other survival game I've played. It's realistic, it's tense, and it's immensely satisfying when you're smart enough to live just one more day. Whatever's in this case, Astrid was ready to die for it. I hope she hasn't already died for it. Yay! Next up is Full Throttle Remastered! Yes, some of you are going to be a little bit surprised to see this on this list because, well, the original Full Throttle is considered a PC masterpiece back in the day. But I wanted to remind people that this excellent remastered version of the classic PC game actually exists on consoles. You play as Ben, the gruff leader of a biker gang called the Polecats, who gets wrapped up in a corporate conspiracy with Corley Motors. See, Corley Motors is the world's last motorcycle manufacturer in this somewhat futuristic world, and they're switching production from bikes to, well, okay, I won't spoil it for you. You know what might look better on your nose? What? The bar. <coughs> now don't mess around with me. All right, all right! The original game is known for great graphics, memorable characters, and excellent voice acting, plus a really fun plot and classic gameplay to match. And I have to say, this game is perfect on consoles because the interface by this time was refined to be more accessible to a wider audience. I mean, no longer did you have to click on verbs or nouns to perform actions like you did on the original Maniac Mansion. And this remastered version is basically the same game, but with crisper HD graphics, and cleaned up audio. Who are you? Maureen, remember? If that's too hard, maybe you should just stick with Mo. This an authorized Cooley Service Center. Full Throttle is one of my favorite adventure games of all time. It's a classic for a reason, and if you like adventure games or you just miss the old LucasArts days, definitely give this a try. You will not regret it. So that's a quick look at some hidden gems for the PlayStation 4. And as you guys know, there are literally hundreds and hundreds of games released for the system. I would love to know down in the comments what other games you consider to be hidden gems on this awesome system. Also, if you missed the previous video that Reggie and I did of hidden gems for the PS4, I will link to it down in the video description below as well as in the corner. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching and have a great day.